Well guys, we're in the kitchen, so you know it's another unboxing. We got the P3 gauge and we got it early. So right now Unitronic uh, has some deal with them where you can only get these through Unitronic through sometime in January, I believe. But I've been bugging P3, and I'll put the screenshot up here, since like October of 2021. And I bugged them literally every month for two years. <laughs> I've been asking them about the development on this, and finally more people got these cars, more people started bugging them, so they finally uh, went through the whole process, got it done. I shouldn't say finally, it's like it's a bad thing. They have a lot of stuff going on. These guys are awesome. They make the coolest gauges. I, I have one in my Mark IV, I have one in my Mark VII. My Mark VII, I used the analog gauge, or the analog boost tap, and then uh, I hooked it up to my uh, ethanol sensor, and we're also gonna be doing that. Um, getting the Motion Race Works, uh, what's it called? Ethanol sensor adapter so that the ethanol sensor doesn't chop down your your, your fuel flow rate. And we're gonna do a whole fuel line, braided line, AN line, all that stuff. But uh, I've been waiting to do that until we get this a way to actually read the ethanol. I didn't want any other gauge. So uh, yeah, now we got this. I need to figure out how to boost tap on this car because you can't use that little port on the side uh, with the Gen 4 cars. Apparently. It, there's something there now, so if you bust through that little piece of plastic, it's uh, manifold replacement time. So I'm guessing I'm gonna have to get like a throttle body spacer thing, and uh, I'm gonna show you that. Do it that way. But anyway, let's unbox this thing real quick. I don't know if I'm going to install it today, but I definitely want to see it. I'm very, very curious. I'm sure a lot of you guys have seen it already and where it mounts. This is exactly where I was hoping they would put it. Um, oh yeah, and they put the ethanol sensor adapter in there, so I got the adapter kit, so I run this. I, I made a video on this already with my Mark 7, so that's that's that, and apparently there's a way to like hardwire this to the car so you don't have to use the OBD part, OBD port, which I'm going to look more into that, and I'm going to have to remount my cob somewhere, which I don't, I'm not going to run it all the time now anyway, I just was using that, oh my goodness, it's beautiful. Will you look at that? The plastic just fell off the front of it. Look at that. Man. Well, it's upside down, actually. That is a nice unit. There we go. Wow. I and mean, it's got this. Did I have this before? I've had like three different versions of these. Oh, so we're, we're going to have to take off some trim. It's going to sit in the trim piece, and I guess this will go behind that trim piece as well there. So that'll be cool to do. There's like different functions you go, ooh, buttons are very clicky. You can like hold these buttons together to like dim it and you got like zero to six. There's all types of different things, but let's do the rest of what's in here. Where they are, oh, they provide trim tools? That's so cool. Well now we got a set for the house. I keep them all in my toolbox at work and now we got some here. Wow, they really slimmed down the kit. That's awesome and a sweet sticker. So that's gonna go on the engine bay. So you got the adapter here. Screen connects to this. This connects to this, which goes to your OBD port. This plugs in and then you got your, uh, you could hook this up to like your dimmer switch, which I, we don't have, so that's useless for us. But then you got your two analogs. You could hook up like um, oil pressure sensor, coolant pressure sensor, or I don't even know what else you would want to bundle or could really do, but, but yeah, it's pretty slimmed down. It's nice. It should be a pretty freaking simple install too. So we'll just uh, we'll get to it. This is what uh, car couples do when their child is taking a nap. They're both going to be wrenching on their own cars at the same time. What's this thing called? Yeah, window regulator. Excite. Hmm. All right, well, let's uh, start on my stuff. Well, we made a little bit of progress. The cob unit used to sit here. I moved it over here. I can't, won't be able to have the door open with it, but the only time I'm gonna be running it is when I'm logging. So now we can take this off and install everything, Got the cables behind here, but my daughter's awake. So we're gonna have to wait till later to finish this up. Sorry guys, we're gonna have to deal with annoying beeping since my seats are out currently. The first thing they say to do is to plug it in and we can, oh, upside down. 
I'm just reading out my, uh, so with the, anytime you have code stored, it's going to read out your codes whenever you first start the car. Okay, so boost, we want to change that to, there's like all these different boost settings depending on the car. I think it's boost B, let me double check. Okay, I'm going through, SL is shift light. So we're gonna go and set the shift light at, let's do like 6300, what is this? DE9F, <laughs> duh, degree Fahrenheit. I had to look that one up. SP speed something maybe? Yeah, this is for speed. So Y is um, MPH and the other one's KPH. This is, uh, I just saw it. Oh, this is like if you have run like way bigger or way smaller tires, you can pick the percentage of your mile an hour to make it accurate on here. Uh, display on. This is if you want it to automatically come on. You can wire it to come on with power or you can manually do it. So that's the three settings for that one. OBD2, obviously, CC. Anyway, you can go on a website. And they'll show you what all these different settings mean and what they do and how to configure your inputs and, and all that jazz. All right, guys. So the way it looks up in here, it looks like this panel goes up behind this vent and goes down into this. And this has a light in it. So this is going to have a connector. This is obviously going to have a connector. And then this seems kind of loose but it go, and it goes all the way back there. So we're going to try and do the vent first. And yeah, so you can't even get this out because this tucks up into the vent. So we'll do vent first, then this, then this. I think there's no DIY out on this yet. So we're just kind of winging it. Well, I did some pulling. I pulled from this corner and then right here and this popped. But it's still, it's stuck up here in this corner. Actually, I might be able to wiggle it out. I don't know. I don't want to break a clip if there's a clip up there. I'm sure there is. But there is an electrical connector right up in here so yeah and this panel definitely goes down into there so that's some progress but now we got to figure out how to it wants to like move zoom back out it wants to move coming out this way so oh it's scary so i got this piece out and that electrical connector just like anything else, just a little tab in there, little tab in, it's on the back side. Tab in, pull off, boom. But like I said, this won't come out. You see all these clips here. One, two, three, four, five, six clips. I wish there was a DIY for this. How about it? So on this side, I went, I brought my arm under the wheel, grabbed on it here and here, boom, pulled it off, and then that allowed me to get that clip out. Now it seems like it wants to I kind of pulled it down a little bit. Now it's, this side's done. It wants to pull down from up here. I just kind of like felt around it until it felt okay. And boom, comes right out. So that's not too bad. And then it looks, I'll pass the camera out. And then it looks like about an eight, eight mil, eight millimeter probably right there. And then this whole panel should be able to pop off. All right, guys, there it is. Didn't even need to take out this eight millimeter nut. Gonna, or bolt, I'll put that back in. This panel doesn't even need to come off because of the way that this thing's made, which it kind of, it's tough to get in there because of that lip. You got the lip right back here and I ran the cable, just pass it through, open this panel, which is just easy baby clips somewhere, wherever I put it. You just get the tool in there and it, this, this panel pops right off. So I. You can kind of see where there's light coming through there. You can see my fingers. Just ran it through there. And then we'll connect it to the box. And we'll scrunch up all the wires here in a corner. And then run the OBD cable down. I'm going to undo another screw down here. That way I can actually route these cables up through. I'll show you guys that. But, uh, oh, the light turned off again. Yeah, pretty simple. So we'll... Now to get this in, you gotta come all the way to the left because it gets thicker as it goes across here. It's thin here and thick here. So you wanna come as far over as you can. Like 
get one edge down, kind of scoot it, and then it takes a little bit of force to pop it down in. And then we'll be able to adjust it left to right um, once that trim is on. Push it right up against there. So now we'll just do everything in reverse, and hopefully this is the way they routed it. I'd imagine this cable can sit right here and not have any issues. And also, if I grab my other light, you can see there's a temperature sensor down in there, so that's pretty neat. If you guys are wondering what holds the vent in, it's just these one, two, three, four clips. So take that as you wish. I'm not sure what that little guy is or does, but it kind of rotates. Um, yeah. Well, they marked it L for left. That's cool. Boom, she's in. Don't mind all my fingerprints and such. Looking good. Right on. So when you're putting the vent back in, like this piece was easy. Do this first. Don't forget your electrical connector. Boom, 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 done. I kind of slid it over. Well, as you're putting the vent in, you're going to have to push on the bottom. Like I used both thumb, a thumb here, a thumb here, and pushed up because it's going to try and hit the P3 gauge like right here. So you're going to have to like, angle this in like from the top like come in from an angle and like keep pressure up while also putting pressure on your thumbs and it'll pop and it snugs right in and this thing is real snug real nice so from here i'll probably grab a zip tie or two zip tie this up start routing all this up and see how she looks It's looking like it's gonna be able to fit right there just fine. I'm gonna try and put the trim panel on to make sure and then zip tie this baby up. And then there's an eight millimeter right there. We'll be able to pull this back ever so slightly and run the cable from the OBD side up. I got that eight mil out. You can see I'm going right beside the OBD connector. I'm able to kind of just Slide these babies on through, and he's poking up right there. It's real gentle like. You can see I already have my, my cob stuff routed through there, so familiar with this process already. And then we can flip this, connect it, boom, boom. And now just swap back and forth between OBD cables. You can get a splitter and run both and then set the um, P3 to low priority, but um, I'm good on that. I'll just let this bad boy do something somehow. You guys definitely don't have to do this like I did, but as you can see, got the connector there, ripping cable, kind of gonna tuck this behind the cob cables, kind of like that. Boom, and then these other ones I'm just kind of gently kind of slide sorry slide them back down and then boop right into the bottom all right so we look like all finished up and here in the next couple of weeks we'll have to pull the some of the stuff back out run more wires run wires down up through the firewall along with um We'll probably just connect the, the boost sensor and run a line through at the same time and just have the line sitting up there for, for whenever we get a boost tab. That way we don't have to do the same things a fourth time now since we did it with Cobb and, well, now we're doing it again with P3, but it should be the second to last time. Everything's so dusty. Dusty ass Texas. All right, let's slap this panel on and get a final look. Guys, there we go. How about it? Beautiful. Oh, when she's done working on her car, open the garage. We'll see how it actually looks with the screen on. And I'll do some B-roll tomorrow. Once it's light out. But damn. I apologize in advance for the constant beeping, but we're gonna fire it up. Tell me about my 420 I saw dude code. Haha, <laughs> I saw dude. And there we go. Mm -hmm. 
Oh well, yeah, it usually does take a second to load, then it should go into vacuum. Unless that's something else. I haven't even like going through the screens yet. Okay. Yeah, so that is boost. Maybe I have it on the wrong setting. Speed. We don't care about speed. So if you hold the left button, it should. Yep, so I got rid of it, so now it won't pop up. Battery voltage. RPM, and this will also give us our shift light. Air intake temperatures. Freaking finally. Probably be rocking that for a while. EGTs. A saw. Be cool if we could see. Ignition. I eh, don't really care for that. Yeah, we're going to get rid of that one. Gone. Throttle position. Yeah, don't care about that. Goodbye. AFR. We definitely care about that. So if you just tap it once, it'll give you like the highest value that's been on the screen. Let's go to yeah, I'll do that. Coolant temp. Cool too. I wonder what that is. Might be like outside temp. I don't know. That's interesting. There to 60. We don't care. Register that I'm pressing it. Hmm. I have to go into the actual menu and turn that off, maybe. And then back to boost. And then when we get ethanol, there'll be a, um, and it'll say ETH, e whatever, whatever. I'll have to go through the settings and see why we're not getting boost reading. I'm drinking beer, not going out driving. Uh, anyway, that's, uh, she works so we'll go out and get some cruising pics vids b-roll all that tomorrow but for now looking pretty slick matches the interior nice I'll turn the lights off and then oh we can hold the right button and dim it so now it's it's dimmer brighter so i'll keep it on the dim setting boom that's clean